Happy, happy day, my fabulous vibers. Welcome back to my podcast, where I believe that every woman deserves the freedom to craft the life she wants and the guts to go after it. We will share stories, facts, and opinions on various aspects of life to give you that kick in the ass to light you up and spread killer vibes every day, 20 Four, seven. I'm so grateful to have you guys in here today. It has been um, quite a ride. We are on season three, and every time I'm about to record a new episode or I'm preparing to record a new episode, there's multiple things that are going on before I get the chance to actually record. I just... um you know, postponed it because there was a moving truck that was making so much noise in the area. There were text messages between myself and my son that were distracting me from my podcast moment. There was a phone call from my mother's doctor because I had been waiting to to speak to him because, um, you know, due to the fact that um, she switched her insurance and she's moved around her insurance. We were not able to see him yesterday and he needs a referral. And in order for you to get a referral, you have to go through, through her PCP, her primary care doctor, practitioner, physician. Um, you know, they go through those that mess. And so I went through 30, 40 minutes of getting her together, pulling it together, getting everything together, making sure she had everything. And then, you know, at the last minute, we weren't able to see her specialist, her liver doctor, because my mother suffers from cirrhosis of the liver. Something that is... We need to investigate a little bit further because my mother has never taken a drink in her life. She doesn't even like it when people drink. She hates alcohol. She hates the smell of it. It reminds her of her father who died of alcoholism and then problems that arose arose from alcoholism. So for her, it's been quite a difficult thing that, you know, that she's been dealing with for most of her life. And now look at her. She's suffering from cirrhosis of the liver. So, um... You know, it's just, it's, 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 how can I say it? It's something that is just so um, ironic, I guess, because, you know, she's just been so cautious about never having a drink in her life, being super careful about what she eats and she drinks and whatever she puts in her body. And now she suffers from something that ultimately has a huge effect on her life and her, um, her quality of life because, you know, even if she has pain in any part of her body, she can't take pain meds because all of that is filtered through the liver. Um, so, you know, beginning of January 5th, I think was the first day that we took her to the doctor and took her to the, to, to see her specialist. She's just been dealing with something every day almost every week for 2021 and as I mentioned in my in my live in my at vibes by Alicia Instagram live um you know I am her taker I'm her keeper I am her advocate ultimately I am her advocate because I have made phone calls to her insurance I have made phone calls to her PCP I have made phone calls to our doctor's nurses keeping track of making sure she gets her MRIs making sure she has her um what is that what does she just had through her throat she had something endoscopy <laughs> So multiple things that I'm trying to keep track of. And every time I come to my microphone to to record something, because this actually is exciting and fun for me because I get to be more creative. There's something always kind of there that just I have to deal with. However, part of it is... um, Life, life happens. Life takes its its moments. I'm raising two teenagers, so there's obviously stuff going on all the time. Um, I'm taking care of a mom who has um, health issues, so I have to take care of her. I work with my husband, so sometimes I have to text and, you know, approve things through him because we do flip houses together. He flips commercial real estate, but I help him in the residential part. 
So there's always phone calls with that. There's always things going on with that. But I wanted to come on and record because I feel a relief. I feel therapeutic. I feel like this is my moment where I can definitely give you all my listeners and my followers and the people that have known me for so many years and people that I've only known a few months. And those of you that I've only known through Instagram, I mean, I just wanted to give you guys some value and some good stuff because I know you look forward to it. I know that you you seek out these podcasts as ways to, I think, in a way for you to disconnect from everybody and everything that's going around you. For me, it's a disconnection from all of those things that I have going on in my life. And quite honestly, I am grateful that I have the means and the funds to take care of everything that I have. Um, I'm really, really um, lucky that, you know, Rusk takes care of a lot of the heavy stuff and I get to take care of my parents and I get to take care of my boys and he takes care of a lot of the other stuff that's like heavier, bigger that I can't honestly handle. And yesterday he had a a little text um, exchange with someone where he was like, you know, Alicia's unavailable right now. She's dealing with her family. And right now, this is not a good time for you to try to get in touch with her. And I appreciate that about him because he's protecting my space and he's protecting my mental health. He's protecting that part of me that loves taking care of others. And honestly, I take care of my parents like they are um, my, my, my priceless pieces of China, I guess is a way to say it. I protect them. I take care of them. I make sure that they're always okay. Anyhow, that's just a little background on what's going on in my life and the stuff that I'm going through. Um, yeah, maybe sometimes you see happy photos. You maybe see things that are going on on Instagram, but honestly, there's a lot of background stuff that goes on and for me, posting on Instagram or posting on my social media is always posting positivity and happiness because that's what inspires me. And so that's what I want to give you guys today. And so today I'm going to be doing an episode on how to look classy and fabulous on any budget, guys. Um, many of you guys know that I grew up in the north side. I grew up next to downtown Houston. I went to Jeff Davis High School. I went to Marshall Middle School. I grew up in a neighborhood that, you know, when we sold our house, we sold it for $35,000, $37,000. This house was built in 1921 when we sold it. Beautiful Victorian style house when we um, left. But um, we were leaving when I was graduating from college and it was a moment for, it was a huge transition moment because I remember telling my father at the po- at that time that we had found a house in Spring Branch and the woman who was selling that house, Miss Robin, was giving us an opportunity to rent it out, lease it out for a few months until I graduated from college. And then I could definitely submit, you know, my, my salary to be able to afford the mortgage on it. And my dad was so like, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why you're leaving the North side. This has always been our home. This has always been where we've always wanted to be. But myself and my sister, we were both college girls and we had outgrown the neighborhood. We didn't feel, we were stifled in that neighborhood. We didn't feel like we were growing. We didn't feel like we were going anywhere. We were both dreamers, um, idealists, looking for the biggest um, thing out there and the next thing out there for us. Um, Our parents didn't pay our college education. They couldn't afford it. So we were both scholarship girls. We were both Pell Grants. We were both on loans, so we did take a lot of loans out for our college education. Anyhow, it made us who we are. So in the process of becoming that girl, that girl that left the North Side or that girl that grew up in the North Side, I learned a lot of really good tricks on be- on looking really good and looking fabulous and looking classy on, on, a, bu- on a budget. Because obviously, <laughs> when you live there, you don't have much of a budget. So here's number one, and here's number one that I want to tell you guys because this is something that has worked for me and that has um, helped me ever since I was in sixth grade and I was going to the first day of school, the Marshall Middle School, and I was going to sixth grade. This was the the pivotal moment for me because 
I remember thinking, what am I going to wear? I have got to wear something completely cool, amazing, and fabulous. And my mom had um, knitted this beautiful, not sweater, but it was sort of like an over sweater, like an over um it it was more like a like like a how can I call it? You know when you go to the beach and you have a little bit of a macrame um over overlay on your thing on your swimsuit. So that's what she did for me. And so she created I created this beautiful look with like a fitted pencil skirt and her gorgeous golden knitted blouse. It was just so pretty and so gorgeous. And I thought about it that day and I thought, you know what, you can look so good and so pretty and so, and feel amazing because it really is about the feeling. It isn't about the look. It really is about how you feel when you're walking out the door. Um, I felt so good and I felt so rich and amazing. It was really just her knitted top, but it was in a golden bronzy color that she bought probably on sale somewhere. And she just decided to knit it and make it for me. Honestly, you guys, I felt so gorgeous and so pretty and I went to school and I felt so good and I felt lovely and I felt um, like I belonged. Honestly, Marshall Middle School is in the north side. All of the kids that go to that school probably come from low socioeconomic levels. We don't come from a lot of money, but setting yourself apart and making yourself look different was a big deal. So this is my tip. Find something that defines your personal style and it also fits your your body type um whether it's a it's a big top whether it's something knitted um to be honest when you don't have a lot of money and when you're on a budget you really do rely on things that are either handmade um by a mother or a grandmother a tia a cousin somebody made it for you <laughs> Or you're defining your personal style. So you'll go to maybe like a thrift store and find something that's kind of cool and interesting and different. And honestly, it doesn't matter how much you bought it for. A lot of my most precious garments were Levi's jeans that I bought for $10, $15. Then my sister and I would head out to Salvation Army and just go crazy looking for those Levi jeans. Um they cost us maybe $20, $25 when we were going and looking for them at Goodwill or Salvation Army. But they just made us feel so good because we just love the way that a Levi's jean fit. So that's number one, guys. Find something that fits you really, really well and, and suits your personal style. So back then, even in sixth grade, when I was 11, 12 years old, I was looking for things in the golden and bronze color scheme. I've always loved copper as a color scheme. I've always been a huge fan of metallic colors. I don't know why years later I read that Leos love metallic colors and that's kind of like, oh, okay, maybe that makes sense. I don't know. Anyways, here's number two. Number two, as you go on and you look at things and you go in your closet, you have got to let go of dated clothing, things that you've worn for years in the past and you don't like anymore. I mean, uh, okay, let me go back. You do like, but maybe you haven't worn anymore. You like it. You think, oh my gosh, one day I'm going to wear that again. I know I'm going to lose weight one day and I'm going to wear those things again. Honestly, guys, you're not going to. And the sooner you let go of it, the sooner you maybe donate it or or send it to somebody or send it to Mexico, which is what I always did because my mom used to go to Mexico and she would always send me a message. Hey, are you uh, donating anything? Yeah, mom, I have a whole bag for you here. Take it, you know, give it away. It's dated. You don't need it anymore. It doesn't suit you anymore. Your life has changed. All of us have evolved through the years. And, you know, it doesn't fit your personal style anymore. Hello. Let it go. The other thing I wanted to add, and this is another tip I wanted to add on here. This is number three, is invest in simple upgrades. Fabulous and classy are raging at the moment. Do you need a touch-up? Does your closet need an update? Or are you feeling a bit out of touch with the decades trends? Just shoot me a DM at think underscore chick and we'll plan out the perfect fashion strategy for you. 
So what does that mean? Like you're on a budget and you're like, yo, I want to look classy. I want to look fabulous. And the reasons why I get these questions is because on my social media accounts, you guys will know I have three social media accounts. My first one and my most important one is my boutique account, thinking underscore boutique. On that one, you will see women of all colors, all sizes, having the most amazing time. Um, you know, wearing amazing, gorgeous clothing, and they just look fabulous. And that's just who they are. You know, at the, at the core, um, you will see women who who. Okay. If you go into my thinking boutique account, you will see women wearing clothing. And honestly, guys, most of the stuff in this is not above $100. So you're not going to be splurging on anything you see on my account at thinking underscore boutique for um, Instagram. You will not be spending a lot of money on that. And I've just been transitioning my account to become more of a slow fashion account as opposed to fast fashion just because... Through the pandemic, I just learned that there is so much waste that happens in uh, the fast fashion industry. And a lot of the people who, who work the fast fashion industry don't get uh, the the money. It doesn't funnel down to them. It, they don't get paid as well as they should, no matter how much money is being spent. So honestly, that's something that has really impacted me throughout the years. But then again, on my personal account, think underscore chick, people are always asking me about my clothes. Where do I get it? Where do I shop? How do I get it? Uh, And honestly, so for me, that's just been sort of um, a way to kind of gauge where you guys are going. And, And honestly, I don't splurge. I only invest in things that are going to be long term for me. I have a really tiny closet and the people that know me are like amazed that I have the clothes that I have. So here's the other thing I'm going to tell you guys, rent or borrow. There are so many rental or borrow opportunities that can make your um, closet just become so much more diverse. I love designer clothes. I am a girl that grew up um, wearing my mom's clothes and she made my prom dresses, both of my prom dresses, eighth grade prom dress and my senior year prom dress. She made those for me because I couldn't afford the real deal. But I will tell you, as I get older and I learn more about fashion, I love designers. I love certain designers and I love local designers, um, people that are doing really cool, interesting things. I'm a huge fan of Veronica Beard. I love their clothes. I love everything that they do and um, their their aesthetic. I love their mission statement. Everything that they do, Veronica Beard is just amazing and totally up my alley, all about my aesthetic. But their pieces are expensive. One dress will cost about $450, maybe $600. Um, I get around that by honestly renting dresses. I had an account through Rent the Runway. I don't have it anymore just because there's no place for me to go right now. I haven't gone anywhere and there's no awesome events that I would go to. But if I did have events to go to, if I did have gala shows to go to, I would most definitely be renting dresses from Rent the Runway. Um, that is one place that I really, really do um, go to for whatever I need. Honestly, I did buy a dress that was like a leopard, um, dress that you guys will see in one of my, um, photo shoots that I just did recently. And I have used that dress so many times, but quite honestly, if you want to look classy on any budget, you will use the same dress in multiple ways. And so many, um, Uh, events and occasions so definitely invest in that look for sales I would say rent I would say borrow here's another tip guys invest in a very simple upgrade so what is that save your money for some designer shoes save your money for that one designer handbag what does that mean 
honestly, it, I'm not talking about going to get a Birkin. I'm not talking about going to get um, like some crazy Giuseppe Zanotti show, shoes that are like $1,000. What I'm saying is find a designer that you really, um, I guess, a designer that you really, really, really connect with. For example, for me, that's Tamara Mellon. Tamara Mellon connects with me in her aesthetic. She connects with me in her story. And I love everything that she stands for and all the things that um, that become who she is. She's Tamara Mellon. So I have a few investment shoes for her. I have a bunch of her... Um, what does she call them? The frontline shoes. She, they're the frontline shoes because they're her like iconic shoes that I just love. I have them in the nude. I have them in the white and I have them in the red because I just love them so much. But those shoes serve so many purposes and I wear them over and over and over. And I paid maybe $325 for those sandals. I also have an investment pair of Manolo Blahnik that I paid $600 for, and those shoes look so worn out, but they still go, go, go. They're not breaking apart. They're, 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 their heel isn't falling apart. Nothing is falling apart on any of these shoes. Why? Because I invested my money. And honestly, guys, I didn't invest any of this until I was about 40 years old because I had felt that I had saved enough money or felt um, valued enough that I can spend and splurge on stuff like this you don't have to wait until you're 40 you can get them when you're younger that's just my mentality I'm a north side girl I don't do things in a uh, haphazard way everything is so meticulous and thought out for me because I just come from an environment where honestly my mom if she saw a Macy's bag she would just you know, kill me because she was like, what the hell did you buy now at Macy's? And honestly, I didn't buy anything expensive, <laughs> but for her, it was like, Oh, here you are spending. And that's not what we do. Okay. There's the next tip. You've got to look for the sales and the clearance items. And you know what I do? I follow bluefly.com because bluefly has um, designer pieces that have, you know, gone into sales racks. Nordstrom has a sales rack and they have some of the best designers there. You definitely can find some really cool stuff there. Also, um, you know, if you guys follow the real real, or if you go to thrift stores, I love thrift stores, especially when I travel because I find things that are super, super cool and amazing. And one year I was in New York, it was 2011. And I went to a store that I had seen through a Bravo show. And it was one of those secondhand stores. And I bought the most fabulous two coats that I've never bought because I live in Houston. And so I never never invest in a coat. We don't need a coat. We just need something warm, but never a coat. It never goes below 32 degrees, maybe one or two days out of the year. It's very unusual. But uh, my husband and I, Rusk and I love to travel. And so there are moments when we go to, um, for example, Paris. We were in Paris in November, December of um what was it, 2014, 2013, um, and it was so cold. But I, So I knew that I was going to need a coat, a serious motherfucking coat that was going to keep me warm. And I got one while I was in New York because I knew I would find one that was fabulous and amazing in a secondhand store. And I believe the name of the store was um, Second Time Around or the next time around. I'm not sure what the name of the store is. I'll, I'll look it up. Um, you know, that store was just, oh, it's called What Goes Around NYC. What Goes Around, the finest luxury vintage from the most trusted source. So I knew about them. So I had gone to New York and I said to him, well, we're, we are traveling to Scotland. Um, we are traveling to France in the wintertime. You know, he was like, yeah, we're going to Scotland in the wintertime. Get ready. You know, um, you're a Houston girl. You don't know how to dress for that. So you've got to look for something that's going to fit that. 
And it was the most fabulous, most fantastic. I found a Donna Karen coat, and then I also found a vintage uh, label-less um, red coat that I just love, and I still have. It was back in 2011. And it has suited me for so many reasons in so many ways. And people ask me about those all the times and I'll say, Hey, I got it for sale at a, at a resale store called what goes around comes around in New York. Anyhow, it's to tell you that in order to look fabulous, you don't have to have a huge budget. You just have to save some of that money for some of this, these investment pieces. Cause honestly, you can have amazing fashion on a budget. And I do that all the time. I'm the most resourceful girl you will ever find. Why? Because I grew up that way. And number two is because I really value pieces um, intrinsically. So what does that mean? You value things the way they are and what they can become and what you can make them to become. Uh, there are things that you think, oh, these jeans, I've had them forever. Are they Levi's? Are they special? Are they guests? Like, um, are they Jordash? There's certain pieces that you will not want to get rid of because they just have longevity and they also have a story behind them. So most of the times when you'll see me shopping for things or, or splurging on anything, it's because it has a long-term value and there's investment in it. I invest in my fashion, to be honest. I do not just take fashion as a face value. I just, I don't do that because... You know, when you like good things and you like beautiful things and you want to be fashionable and you want to be classy, you want to get good things. How do you do that? As I said, you go and you and you get rid of stuff that doesn't doesn't define you. You find things that are fitting your personal style. Are you contemporary? Are you a vintage lover? Are you somebody that just loves comfort? Go for that. Um, let go of things that are not working for you and donate them or give them to somebody. Have a borrow. Have a garage sale. I say look for cells. I love blue fly. I love things where I can find. I found a few pairs of Junis, uh, Giuseppe Zanotti shoes for half off, almost 75% off because they were on sale. And I look for those things because, honestly, I'm just going to buy things that are going to be on sale. I rarely, rarely, rarely buy full buy anything at full price. Even if I can't afford it, I feel like it is not cool to do that you've got to still because honestly being in a, bo a boutique owner i've realized that a lot of times they overprice a lot of stuff so yeah don't do that i'm telling you from the inside out don't do that you can definitely buy things at a lower price in a store buy thrifts go to the thrift stores and shop i mean there's a lot of thrift stores that have some good stuff honestly we used to go through the washington street salvation army we would go to the washington street goodwill um if you're in houston you know where washington avenue is and like the whole houston avenue area is and you're going to find some really cool eclectic clothing that you're not going to um, find anywhere else and and that's where i used to get my fabulous Levi's pants guys they still have my fabulous Levi's size five. Oh my god I'm just looking for the day that I can wear those again because I don't want to give them up they're a part of me but those are my tips for you going out and looking fabulous on a on a on a budget even when you do have money, guys, you still want to buy things on a budget because you want to have value for the things that you purchase and you want to make sure that you're investing in whatever you have. Yeah, granted, once you have a little money, you do buy things a little bit of a higher value. I do sometimes buy things for myself in the $500, $600, $700 area. It's very rare, though. It's just on a special occasion because I know that I can find those things in a different place and just find them, you know, for, for, for much cheaper. And you can look fabulous, guys. Go to my Instagram account, think underscore chick. You'll see some of the stuff that I wear. I've worn it a few times. I do, 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 do a lot of wearing and, and tearing until it finally falls apart. I have a shoe doctor. My poor sure doctor sees me all the time because he's like, uh, you're here again. Yeah, I'm here again. Follow me at think underscore boutique. I'm doing a lot more slow fashion and follow my boutique, my, and my podcast account where I do a lot of fashion 
lifestyle, travel stuff and business as well. Um, you will be amazed at some of the tips that I share that you've never heard before. I love you guys. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for being here, being a part of this. It's a journey. It's not easy. Um, recording day. Love you. Love you.